Can you give us some guidance or some insight into what you're uh, looking at here? If you're an importer of record in the United States, you have to demonstrate reasonable care for the products that you're bringing into this country. And this is no different. This falls under that requirement. But at the same time, tracing your supply chain is wildly complicated. Um, and it's in large part, we have this sort of inverted pyramid, right? When you're an importer in the United States, you're making a product overseas. You typically send a purchase order to one tier one supplier, right? And in some cases, you may nominate some tier two suppliers, right? But the pyramid grows. You go from one supplier and you may have hundreds of thousands of suppliers in your supply chain based on the commodities you're manufacturing. And to trace every entity, every employee that's ever worked on your production feels like an impossible task. And in many ways it is, but you've got to approach it with, with, um, with a strategic approach. You have to approach it from um, a, a risk-based, high-priority sector approach. Because supply chain tracing is not necessarily new. We've been doing that for, for decades, for, for 100 years. Um, and the UFLPA is based on the Tariff Act of 1930 when we started prohibiting imports of goods that were produced, mined, manufactured, in whole or in part, with the use of any type of forced labor, convict labor, indentured labor, child labor, and so forth. And here's, here's why that's so difficult. In, in the apparel, footwear, and textiles industry, you may farm your cotton in California, great cotton in California, and you may ship the bales all the way to China. But when those bales go in by the container load, you know, tons and tons of cotton bought from the United States, which is good for our business, right? It's good for America. They're buying U.S. cotton because it's, it's high quality. Well, when it gets to the trading warehouse, it can be co-mingled with other cotton. And then when a, when a purchase order comes in for cotton bales from a yarn spinner, both types of cotton can accidentally be sent or purposefully sent to the yarn spinner. And those fibers are spun together. And then all of a sudden, you have a DNA marker in your supply chain. Having a multidisciplinary task force inside your organization to deal with supply chain tracing and compliance to the UFLPA is almost a requirement at this point. Um, if you don't have a bulletproof traceability program, you are likely going to struggle to provide the evidentiary standard, which is clear and convincing. He, even experts listen to us and uh, we, we brought him on the show. The only, the only thing that's really bad about Eric, honestly, is that he is an Eagles fan, but other than oh, that, no. we're, we're good. <laughs> Uh, you had to get that one in, didn't you, Lala? I did. I had to. <laughs> okay. 